Hey guys, Matthew Doyle here again with Scaleform GFX UDK Integration Video Tutorial 4, Capturing Input. In this session, I'll be walking you through the steps needed to capture keyboard or game controller input, and then routing that input to a SWIFT file, which will then interpret the input via ActionScript. Let's have a look at how the flash file we're using is put together. The file is actually quite simple. We have a movie clip of the Unreal Integration logo which has an instance name of Unreal Logo and lives on its own layer. If I go into the movie clip, you'll see that starting on frame 2, which is labeled On, we have a simple scaling animation. Going back to the main scene, let's take a brief look at the action script. We've created a new layer in the timeline and labeled it Actions. And we've placed all our action script on frame 1 of this layer. While you can place action script just about anywhere, including inside buttons, we recommend keeping your action script all in one place to facilitate a clean and easy to understand flow to your flash. This also makes debugging much easier. Feel free to pause the video and write the code down if you'd like to use it to recreate this tutorial file. Of course, the first line, as we discussed in video 1, needs to be there so that we can make use of Scaleform's special extensions, including 3D. We have a line of code that modifies the perspective field of view for a movie clip. That line is underscore persp fov equals 25. The higher this number, the more perspective distortion will occur on 3D objects as the field of view is adjusted. This value must be greater than 0 and less than 180. The default value is 55. Please note though that this extension is not in the May release of UDK, but will be in a future update. Following this, we have a block of code here that listens for keyboard input. The next block tells the logo to rotate on the Y axis in 3D when the user presses either Y or U. We'll be discussing the next two functions in the next video. So let's head back into UDK and set everything up. The first thing we need to do is to add an Unreal Trigger object next to the surface the Swift is on, so that once the player stands on the trigger, he'll activate a Kismet sequence. I've already created one in my sample level. With the trigger selected, return to Kismet. Right-click on a blank area and select New Event Using, followed by the name of the trigger. Select Touch from the pop-up menu. Set the max trigger count to zero. Now we need to add a new action. Select GFX UI, then set GFX Captured Keys. Wire the touched output of the trigger to activate on set GFX Captured Keys. Wire the untouched output of the trigger to deactivate. Next, create a new object variable. Wire this variable up to Movie Player on both the Open GFX Movie node as well as the Set GFX Captured Keys node. Now, to begin adding keys, click on the Capture Keys field. Then click the green plus icon two times to create two new blank fields. Click on the word None next to the Zero field and type Y. Then click on the word None next to the One field and type U. Save the level and let's give it a test. Once you walk up to the surface with the Swift, you should be able to use the Y and U keys on your keyboard to alter the 3D rotation of the logo. If you have trouble activating the trigger, just go back into the editor and adjust the trigger size and placement. This concludes Tutorial 4. In Tutorial 5, we'll cover communication between UDK and a Swift using Invoke Action Script and FS commands.